Um, it's an honor to be here uh, today with all of you to celebrate this really important milestone. And um, milestones like this always sort of make me a little nostalgic. It's great to see so many old friends because um, I spent, boy, every day from 1998 with Gustavo and folks from McGeo and 500 and 32BJ and the laborers fighting to start uh, passing a living wage law in Montgomery County to create a living wage for everybody that works directly on a county contract because it was politically impossible to raise the minimum wage in Montgomery County at that time. And we were knocked off of the ballot by a lawsuit. We brought it to the council. They, they voted it down by one vote. And we kept fighting for three more years and eventually passed that in 2001 to establish the principle that everybody who works full time ought to be able to feed their family without, without being dependent on the government. And we've continued to fight for that now for 20 years. It's really amazing that some of us have been doing this for a long time. So Mark, thank you so much for your leadership putting this bill in. Um, I was uh, proud to be a co-sponsor, co-conspirator on this bill, and then when it got stuck, um, happy to sponsor the amendment that we moved it from five to four to nine to nothing. I think we were all surprised on that day when the yeses just kept coming um, down the dais. It's coming at a pivotal moment for workers when they really need a boost, right? Um, the cost of living in Montgomery County is among the highest in the entire nation. We know we have a housing crisis, we have a child care crisis. Those costs keep going up and up because the supply, um, the demand outweighs the supply so, uh, so se se severely. The, um, we should talk about who we're, is going to benefit from this and not, not forget about them. These are the workers that just got us through a pandemic. The essential workers that were caring for our children and keeping them safe during a pandemic, that were cleaning our buildings and, keep, and, 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 and keeping them particularly clean to keep all of us safe, that were bagging our groceries in our grocery stores to keep the economy moving and providing critical health care services to our right in our hospitals, in our nursing homes, in our clinics to get us all vaccines, to get us all t tests at first and then later get us all vaccines. And they were putting themselves on the front lines long before there was a vaccine, when there wasn't even enough PPE to keep them all safe. And we were all fighting for those supplies. But when a bunch of us, most of us had to um, the privilege of going to work on Zoom every morning, um, they were on their front lines putting themselves at risk to keep the economy rolling and to keep all of us safe. And those are the folks who are going to benefit today, and we should be celebrating them. Countless studies show that this is the right thing to do, not just for the workers, but because it's the right thing for the economy, because the minimum wage raises the standard of living for our poorest residents, and that money goes right back in the local economy at a time when our local economy desperately needs a boost. We're stuck in a recession right now. When you put money in the pockets of low-income workers, whether it's through a tax um, reduction like the local EITC that we all just increased with the county executive and the full council, or by, by raising their wages, it doesn't get parked in tax shelters. It doesn't go in offshore real estate investment. It gets spent right here locally on diapers, on groceries, on rent and catching up on credit card bills, that's where it's going. It's going right back in the local economy, and it's getting recycled over and over um, to stimulate the local economy and create more jobs and help us climb out of this recession. It helps all our local small businesses. It helps them create jobs to bring our other workers that have been furloughed back into the economy. And it's not only the right thing to do, it's the smart thing to do for, rec for giving our economy a boost. So I really want to thank, we didn't get this because, uh, done because of just elected officials, of course. We got it done because of all of you that are in the room. CASA, JUFJ, Progressive Maryland, Working Families Party, 32BJ, the laborers, MCEA, 500 and 400, and so many others that, that sh showed up in front of the council with signs and talked to the council members over and over and over and sent us phone calls and emails to build the majority that we really needed to get this done. This wasn't easy, you all remember that, um, but as Mark said, we gotta keep fighting because we're not everywhere we need to be to get all of our workers um, a living wage in Montgomery County.